Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Well, welcome to Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. My name is Carrie Pickett, and I am uh, the Executive uh, Director, Vice President here of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College, along with my husband. And I am super privileged to get to teach you tonight, as well as host myself and host you this evening. So we're super excited to have you. So welcome. I have some really powerful things that the Lord has put on my heart. I've been already teaching them today, so I'm super fired up to be able to share these truths with you. So stick with me while I give just a few announcements. Um, Tuesday Night Live Bible Study is live. And so we have some amazing things that you get to do and interact. So as you are watching me this evening, as you are participating in this Bible study, whatever form that you are watching on, uh, you can go down to the bottom and uh, put in some questions. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach and then I'm gonna give about 15 minutes here at the end to get through as many questions as possible. I absolutely love question time. I love being able to truly answer the things that are on your heart to the best of my ability and the things that I don't get to, then you're going to want to go to Andrew Womack Ministries Facebook page because every Tuesday we have a Q&A roundup where uh, either Barry Bennett or, or Greg Moore, two of our amazing teachers at Karis Bible College, they will be answering more of those questions. So live Bible study Tuesday night. We also have it on Thursday night at the same time, but then throughout the week, Monday, Friday, 10 o'clock in the morning and Wednesday, seven. And so we love being able to teach that. And then that time of Q and A, uh, we'd have every single one. And so you definitely do not want to miss out on that. One of the other things that makes this a special time is that our prayer ministers uh, are active during this time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're ready to be able to minister to you. So I would encourage you, if you are needing prayer and just agreement with like-minded believers and definitely people that are praying God's will, God's word with authority, power, conviction, and anointing, they're the ones you call. Uh, sometimes we'll call people and they'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Well, I hope God can do something. Man, you don't want somebody praying with you that hopes God does something. You want somebody praying with you that is going to pray the word of God. God with authority. And so our prayer ministers absolutely have been trained. They have relationship with God. They love the word and they know how to minister to you. So definitely call them. The number is there on the screen and we would love to be able to hear from you. When you call them, definitely ask about our resources. We have so many resources. You know, I'm just a, a content nerd. I just constantly love just all that the Bible has to teach us. And what I appreciate so much about Andrew Womack and this ministry is we have so much biblically based content that is the word being explained and how you can apply it to your daily life. So definitely check that out. They can tell you some of the resources, especially if you're going through something that you need some specific direction and what does the Bible say about this? Not what Andrew Womack says about it, not one of the teachers. What does the Bible say about this? And they're gonna help direct you to really understand what the word of God is saying. So definitely check that out. Also, I really, really want to invite you to uh, sign up for the Bible study notes. So every uh, Tuesday night, this is only on Tuesday, not for our other Bible studies, but just on Tuesday, Whichever teacher is teaching, whether it's Andrew, myself, maybe one of our other uh, guest ministers, we uh, take those notes and we send them to you. So please do that by going to awmi.net slash study and you can sign up for those Bible study notes and then they're gonna come and you can go through these scriptures and verses. And I would encourage you to do that. Even if you say, oh, well, I don't know, believe that we're, I'm gonna say something tonight. Other teachers are gonna say something that you are going to need that you're like, whoa, and it's revelation and you wanna go back through it. So definitely do that. When you sign up, we always then give away a free, um, we do a drawing and we give away a free product. So last week was Andrew's A Better Way to Pray. And I'll just tell you right now, A Better Way to Pray, powerful book on prayer uh, that most people don't realize. And then what uh, Mike and I uh, have a book that we have written, Life Foundations. This is Six Pillars to Knowing God, right? We need to know who he is. Then knowing yourself, right? And then how to impact others. And this is an absolutely powerful book. I've read it and been like, wow, 
this is good, <laughs> even though I wrote it. <laughs> uh, this is really powerful. It's just these six points, and we teach this all over the world and see people absolutely set free. So I'm going to encourage you to get this. This will change your life. It's going to talk about God's love for you, uh, who you are, spirit, soul, and body, how God sees you, then coming to a place where how you know uh, because God sees you a certain way, now you come into agreement of seeing yourself that way, what God's true nature, power is towards you, and then your authority as a believer. So I just absolutely love these. These are foundations that have radically changed my life. I've ministered these all over the world, over 30 different nations, and we have seen people absolutely experience miracles because they get down to the foundations, get some foundations built. And then once that's done, man, God starts building on it with a whole bunch of other things. So I'm just going to encourage you, please reach out even to our prayer ministers and ask about that. All right. Tonight, I'm so privileged to be able to minister to you. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk about the power of the cross. You know, what I found is that, um, especially with Christianity, so many people will the cross is a starting point like, okay, well, you know, I was a sinner and then Jesus died on the cross for me and he took my sins. And then, you know, that's how I heard the gospel that Jesus loved me so much. He died for me. And then, so I received Jesus. And then now you're trying to walk in and learn and grow. And sometimes we can just look at the back at kind of our salvation testimony and we can kind of look back and I'm like, oh yeah. And we don't really have this active understanding of the power of the cross. And I can I just tell you right now, understanding the work of the cross, and this is actually uh, a series that I do called The Goal of the Cross. Um, if you would like more on this, I actually have a full devotional on it. I have a full CD series. I have a full uh, television series on The Goal of the Cross. And we go into just the excitement of what the cross was. Guys, I'm telling you right now, the cross changed everything. Because when you look at, um, and didn't just change everything, it realigned us to truly our created purpose in God. And that was that God created us in his image. God created us to have relationship. You see with Adam and Eve and, and God, they were walking in the garden. There was fellowship. And then what happened is sin came in. Sin separated us from God. Now, does, did God still love us? Did God still try to commune with us? He spoke through his prophets. He spoke through the law, right? He spoke through all of these different dynamics. And so, yes, God was still trying to minister to us. God was still trying to reach out, but sin was separating, right? Mm. This is why we see what in the law, when we see the, the, old, the covenant and we see the Old Testament and we see all the rules and regulations, it was, it was truly showing us that we needed a Savior, that in our own works and actions and all of our sacrifices of blood sacrifice, you know, to purify and cleanse, it was still so natural. And Jesus came and said, I will be the sacrifice. And it's not like the blood of bulls and goats anymore. It's the sacrifice of pure spotless blood. He call, was called the lamb of God that took away the sin of the world, that perfect sacrifice for you and I. And because of that, now truly the cross has brought us into now relationship and not performance. And this is what you're going to hear throughout the ministry, throughout live Bible studies, throughout the live streams and the conferences, this ministry truly is directing you towards. We are not teaching this religious concept that God is harsh and punishing. He is far away and you've got to work earn, prove, or maintain your goodness, your righteousness, so that you can then one day, hopefully, walk in the blessings of God. No, that is not what the cross did. And guys, this has nothing to do with denominations. This has nothing to do with uh, teachers or styles of teaching. Guys, I'm telling you right now, this is about the cross because the cross brought us into an invitation of relationship with God, no longer this dynamic of works, 
right? That the moment you make a mistake, you've disqualified yourself and you know, you, now, now, you know, the sin is upon you, that weight is upon you. Now you need to go into the, the holy place and you know, you have to have the, the priest make the sacrifice and then for what type of sin, you make what type of sacrifice, right? And then that shed blood in the holy of holies and all the dynamic. The cross fulfilled all of those ordinances. The handwriting of ordinances was against us, having taken those and nailed them to the cross. See, most people talk, think about, you know, that our sin, your list of sins was nailed to the cross. And absolutely, Jesus took it on the cross. But when it talks about the ordinances, the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, all the law, all of those um, 600 and 13 laws, uh, no, yeah, 613 laws, no, 316 laws, sorry, I was getting my numbers backwards there, 316 laws, uh, man, it's just absolutely amazing that within Jesus, he took all of that for us, amen, and so when we talk about the power of the cross within our lives, then we're coming into this whole new relationship with God Almighty. So I want to talk about some of the things that the cross revealed, the power of what the cross revealed to you and I, because I'm telling you right now, this is not some theological concept we're just talking about. We are talking about this dynamic of the power of the cross in your everyday life. And I'll tell you, when you understand the power of the cross, wow you realize what lives within you. The victory of that accomplishment of the cross, what it brought to you, what it gave you access to, what empowered you to become, what you're enabled to go and say and be, right? And the power of God that backs you up. That is the cross. Oh, I get so excited when I teach this because it brings you truly to the heartbeat of God. And this is the gospel. The gospel, that's, that's where, you know, you've heard Andrew talk about the gospel is the too good. It's seemingly too good to be true good news of the word of God, because that's where Jesus took our sin. Jesus took our punishment. Jesus then placed himself and his inheritance within us. He gave us full rights as sons and daughters, then gave us an inheritance, and then gave us a teacher to walk in the power of that. Oh, that's is good. That sounds like too good to be true. Wait a minute. I'm not having to earn this. I'm not having to maintain this. It's a free gift of salvation. I just have to come into understanding that I need a savior. I come into repentance of my sin and I receive him and I become righteous. Guys, that is the good news of the gospel. And with that good news, let me tell you, that good news doesn't mean that you get to be mean and carnal and, and just be fleshly. No, like, well, the love of God, the grace of God, I get to do whatever I want. No. I'll tell you right now, the power of the cross has given you victory in this world for such a time as this. That means you don't have to be dictated by the lusts, carnality, distractions of this world any longer. Amen? You can be in the world, but you're not of the world. And as you're in the world, you start doing what? You bring the kingdom of God right? Through your life. There's an overflow of the life. The rivers of God of his life are flowing out of you and I. So that then truly we are light and we are salt. We become, we become kings and priests. We become called peculiar and strange in this world. Why? Because we're living completely from a completely different place of position and victory, as well as the source that is not the world any longer. It's not our intellect, not our past, not our financial status. No, our source is now coming from, I know my victory because of what Jesus did for me. Guys, this, this sets you free from religion. I'm just, I'm so excited. So one of the things I want to talk about with the cross and the power of what was revealed through the cross was the revealed love of God. So I had um, taught today on the revealed love of God in our second year here at Karis Bible College. And can I just tell you, uh, just even, wow, this last week and the week before, wow, I was doing so much teaching on the love of God. I just finished a powerful love of God course to the first year students. I'm telling you, if you have saying, I need to grow in the word of God, I don't even know where to start. Can I encourage you? Please check out Karis Bible College. We have all kinds of ways that you can start studying the word of God. And I'll just tell you, there's things that I've been saying. There's just things the Holy Spirit has just been bringing out 
that is so powerful. So I'm just to encourage you, please check out Karis Bible College. But today I was talking about the love of God and then even yesterday with the first year talking about the love of God and truly the cross was about the revealed love. Now, we know the verse of John 3, 16, for God so loved that he gave, right? His only begotten son. So you know that there's this movement, there's this momentum, there's this demonstration of God's love towards you. He didn't sit up in heaven and be like, oh man, that's just so sad. Isn't that sad? Those poor sinners. Yeah, sad, huh? No, <laughs> he didn't just stay there. It says that for God so loved, right? There was such a depth, such a passion, such a conviction of his love that he gave, that he made movement towards you today. And can I just tell you that, and maybe you've heard me say this in talking about the love of God and, and Guys, you cannot hear this enough. Even as someone who teaches about the, the, the love of God, even, even as I have a revelation of the love of God, God is constantly taking me into new revelations of the depth of his love. Why? Because it says in Ephesians chapter 3, in Ephesians chapter 3, talking in verse 14 all the way through verse 20, it's talking about that you and I would be rooted and grounded in the love of God. The love of God that surpasses knowledge that we would together with all the saints would know the width, the depth, and the height of God's love for us, the breadth of that love. I'm just telling you right now, there is so much of grandeur to God's love for you today. And that was expressed through the cross. And that love was strong enough to cover every sin, every disease, every dysfunction, every disobedient act that you have ever done or anything that's ever happened to you. Amen. The power of the cross is that good today. And it's not just like, oh yeah, I believed on Jesus. No, you believed on Jesus through that work of the cross. And I tell you right now, it's a finished work. When Jesus was on the cross, he didn't say, Father, forgive them for they have sinned. They know not what they do. And then breathing his last, he said, well, I hope they get it. And I hope this works. And um, there'll be a lot more I have to do for him. He didn't say that, did he? He said, it is finished. When he said it is finished, that old covenant relationship was completed. The glory of the old covenant was completed. Jesus, having been spotless, having fulfilled every jot and every tittle of the law, that's what the Word of God says, fulfilled everything so that he could be the perfect sacrifice for you and I. So that now as you and I receive him and stand before him, we stand before him what? Uh, having received that finished work, he brought a fullness of righteousness, a fullness of justification, a fullness of his spirit, right? That now is joined with our spirit. So we are called one with the Lord, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Ah, it's amazing, you guys, the goodness of the gospel and what it really means. This is so powerful. And so God's love has made movement towards you. And I don't know what your story is. You may feel like, I, I don't know God's love. I don't feel it. I don't feel God loves me. Can I just tell you right now, stop making God's love about feelings and emotions and goosebumps. Now, do I feel the love of God? Yeah. But it, I'll tell you right now, I've got no revelation in my heart. I have chosen by faith to believe everything this word has to say and that the work of the cross was the revealed love of God. You are loved of God today, no matter what your emotions tell you. Because so many times we want God to love us in a way that comforts our flesh, gives us what we want, when we want it, in the timing that we want it. And if God doesn't do it, well, then I, God doesn't love me. Stop it. That is not, that is not the love of God. Let me tell you what the love of God is. Romans chapter five, in verse six uh, through eight, it says this, for when we were still sinners without strength, Romans five, six through eight, for when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. Christ died for the ungodly, meaning he didn't die because you were so holy and you got your act together so well, you finally had cleaned up your mess. No, he died for you and I when we were ungodly. That's amazing. It goes on in verse six. 
Verse 7, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone will even dare to die. Then in verse 8, it says this, but God demonstrates his own love towards us. I love that. God was like, I want to demonstrate my heart, my love. It says in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Guys, this scripture takes away, knocks out so many of the falsehoods of religion. Where religion says, well, God will accept you when you, if you, because you, right? Guys, I'll tell you right now, salvation is not about you and I cleaning up our act to then go to the Lord. Someone told me one time, it's like taking a shower before you take a bath, right? Right? Like I've got to do all these things to kind of clean up myself and get my act together before I can present myself to God so that then he can cleanse me. No, you can't cleanse yourself at whatever standard or level or qualification that you think that now you're worthy. No, you and I are never worthy, ever, ever, ever worthy in our flesh, in our sin, in our state, in all of our uh, worldly perfection. You can never come to a place where you're like, God's like, wow, you are holy. Well, yeah, sure, come on in. I'll call you a son and daughter. No, he made movement that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'm telling you today, no matter what is going on within your life. Can I tell you, there is movement of God towards you. He's wanting to touch you. He wants to accept you right where you're at, right what you're thinking, doing, feeling, right at whatever level of dysfunction or difficulty you're in right now. God says, hey, hey, let me in. I am totally for you. So let my love touch you. Let it transform you. Let it have a work. But so many times we keep God at a distance like this because we're thinking we got to do something, become something, earn something, maintain something, prove something before then he can make movement towards you. But John 3, 16, Romans chapter 5, here's talking about that God demonstrated, God made movement for God so loved he gave. That is God's movement towards you today. So this is where we can come to a place and saying, okay, Father, Thank you. Thank you for making movement towards me. Father, thank you. And I receive that you have accepted me. I receive that you're for me in this moment. I receive that you want your love wants to touch every situation. Father, I just give up me trying to earn, maintain, or qualify. And I truly, with humility, receive the fullness of your gift, the fullness <clears throat> of what you gave to me. Amen. Isn't that powerful? Now go over here to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Mm. And this is a powerful verse because this is talking about the nature and character of God, God himself. And when you've ever heard me teach on the true nature of God, I do lots of teaching on the nature of God because I believe truly when you understand who he is, Man, it, it becomes less about you. It becomes not about you at all. And it becomes truly about him. But then the fullness of that nature and all those promises and all those attributes and all that action of that character towards you. So when it says here in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, it says this. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. This he's saying he is the definition of love. And then in verse 9, it goes on to say, in this... The love of God was manifested towards us because of, it says in this, meaning in what? In his character, in who he is, for God is love. So therefore in this, the love of God, out of who he is, that love of God was manifested towards us. It didn't sit up there with its arms crossed being like, okay, all right, I'm waiting. Come on, I'm waiting. No, it said it was manifested towards us. That is a visual representation, demonstration, action, tangible, you can see and experience. And that's exactly what Jesus coming to be a man as the son of God did for us. He manifested his love towards you and I, right? It is not a set of regulations and commands, right? It goes on here to say this, and this the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. 
This is, this is, guys, when I talk about the, the power of the cross, this is exactly, it is that power, it is that manifested love of what he did, taking our place for you and I, that did what? Gave us the ability that we might live through him. Now it's not you living out of your own strength. Now we get to live through him, through his love, through his perspective, through his victory and completed work of the cross. It goes on in here in verse 10, in this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. He took that place to be the sacrifice and the replacement for us. Amen. Praise God. It's not that we loved God, but that he first loved us. And this is why you've heard me say this before. Whenever I hear you talk, I talk about the love of God is that God is not saying, God's love is not the love of this world. I love you if, I love you when, I love you because the love of God is not. Okay, today I'm going to teach you how to love God. The love of God message is not about your love for God. It's the fact that he first loved us. That is the power of the cross that he demonstrated that towards you and I today, right? It says that he took our place. And this is what is so powerful about the power of the cross. It wasn't just the death of Christ that he took our place. He took our sin. Then he went to hell for us, right? He took all of that. But here's the thing. He left all of sin's power, death's power, sickness's power that the enemy had been wielding for generations. He took it back to hell and he left it there. And now, then not only did it says that he, he went and he preached and he took, he took the keys of sin, hell and death, but it also says that he led captivity captive. Can I just tell you today, that power, that work, that person, the person of taking captivity captive lives inside of you. You know what that means? That means you have captivity taking power. That's the power of the cross inside of you today. That means you can look at different situations, different difficulties. Maybe it's a diagnosis, it's financial issues, it's relational issues, right? It's emotional, mental issues, whatever those are. You can say, you know what? I have the person who led captivity captive. So captivity doesn't have ability to hold you back. And that's exactly what sickness is, right? That's what exactly lack is. Financial difficulties, it's trying to hold you captive that you can't be free to live your life without pain, without freedom, without mobility, without hope. Finances are trying to keep you from living in dreams and, and walking in the prosperity of it, trying to hold you back. You can't afford, you can't go, you can't do, you can't buy, you can't release, you can't bless, you can't give right that's what that's what lack is trying to tell you you are held captive and if you let it you'll sit there going okay I guess I, I guess the sickness is what I have to deal with I guess lack is just you know where I am I'm just not good at finances I guess God's I guess I just haven't done enough for God to bless me no you have captivity leading power within you that you look at all those things and say no I take you captive in the name of Jesus because Jesus already has the victory. And so now I use my authority as a child of God. That's amazing. Not only do you have that within you, but he said it, he took the keys of sin, hell, and death, right? That means whenever, whenever there's a diagnosis of death over your life, Whenever sin tries to tell you that you are addicted, that you have to obey, that you have to succumb, that you're too weak, you're too carnal, right? Whenever sin tries to tell you who you are and what you should succumb and surrender to, no, you say, listen, I have Jesus himself, the one who died on the cross, took my shame, my guilt, took my place. He's already taken you captive. He already said sin and death do not have victory within my life. So it's not only this power of the death of Christ, but praise God, we do not have a dead Jesus that we invited into our heart. I invite the dead, crucified Christ into my life. That's not what we pray, is it? I invite Jesus, the living God, the savior of the world, who was crucified and risen again. 
Guys, that resurrection power, I'll just tell you right now, that resurrection power lives inside of you. That means that things that are trying to be dysfunctional, broken, bruised, trying to bring death, trying to bring destruction, trying to bring captivity, you have the resurrection power of the cross inside of you today. Why? Because the person of Jesus, the resurrected Savior lives inside of you. And I'll tell you this, anything, Jesus's resurrection is stronger than anything you're holding on to. But this is what you're able to do. You say, Lord, all my past, all my questions, all my, all my sin, all my excuses, all my dysfunctions, I, I give them to you today to give them to your resurrected power that lives inside of me. This is the power of the cross. I have so many more things that I could share with you tonight, but I'll just tell you this. He has taken all your sins. He's taken all of their guilt and shame and condemnation today. And this is why you and I can live in the freedom of the cross. Now, sometimes we don't realize all the things that belong to us. That's where the enemy tries to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. Because he understands, ooh, they don't know the power that really lives inside them. They don't really, they don't truly understand the victory that belongs to them. And so what his, his only, and I, I don't want to say power, the only deception that he has within our lives is deception. Oh, I guess you got to do it. Oh, I guess God doesn't love you. Oh, I, and he, he just twists and he lies. Everything that the enemy is telling you today is a lie. Wow. That makes it super easy. Everything that God says is truth. Everything the enemy says is a lie. So uh, I have so much more. If you go to lifefoundations.net, I have my, uh, my course on Goal of the Cross that is there and all the resources. You can look at the resource page. You can go find that Goal of the Cross and it'll take you through 20 episodes. So we go through 20 episodes of the victory of the cross, what it provided, what it brought you into, and the position you now hold because of the cross. And I encourage you to get that because I want so much more to say to you, um, but I prepared it in that form. So reach out to also uh, our prayer ministers and you can get some of those resources. Ask them about that, the goal of the cross. All right, so here at the end, like I promised, I'm gonna take some time to answer some questions um, and I'm just going to, um, you know, this is one of the, the, the benefits of having a host. They're able to bring it to you, but, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to go through these as many as possible. So Autumn asks here on chat, how do you focus on Jesus's love for you more than your love for him? Or is it an even balance? Well, this is what's so powerful about having a relationship with the word of God. And as it is declaring the finished work of the cross and the love of God. I, I focus on the love of God. I absolutely focus on the lo Lord. Show me. I always encourage our students and, and you've heard me maybe make this challenge to you in previous episodes or maybe the first time tonight. Um, I always give a challenge, pray the prayer, Lord, show me how much you love me today. That's not a selfish prayer. That's not a, Oh Lord. Like that's not a, with an attitude and some chip on your shoulder. You're just saying, say, if this is who you are, and this is your pursuit of me. And you've made, and you've, you've pursued me, you've manifested, you demonstrated it. Lord, show me that today. And I'll just, I'll just tell you right now, God wants to show you. So I focus on the love of God. Lord, show me how much you love me. Lord, as I'm reading the word of God, even if it doesn't say love of God, as I'm seeing redemption, as I'm seeing healing, as I'm seeing these different promises, I'm seeing the love of God. If I focus on that, guess what happens? There is an automatic response. There is just an overflow of my love for him. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. Lord, how can I live for you today? How do I do this today, right? Then what happens when you know God, how God sees you, it's amazing then the way that you see other people and you're like, wow, Lord, I thank you. Let's, let's teach me, how do I love you today? How do I obey you today? How do I show your love to someone else today, right? It's just a natural overflow. So I focus first truly on uh, God's love for me, asking him to teach me, lead me and guide me. And there is truly an ultimate river of life that comes out. And I can ask him, Lord, what do you have for me today? How do you want me to live for you? That is you surrendering to say, my life is now about loving you because it's not about my own agenda. Amen. So good question. 
Uh, Denise asks this on YouTube. Is there a way to discern which voice is God's and which is the deception of the enemy? Perfect question. Absolutely perfect question. Okay, if you want to know which is God's voice and which is the enemy, you get into the word of God. This is the truth of God. This is absolutely the heart of God. This is the character of God. This is the work of God. This is the attribute of God. Every promise in this word is tied to who he is. As Rafa the healer, Sidkenu the righteousness, Jaira the provider, Shalom our peace, right? Uh, he's our banner, right? All of these attributes of God, every promise reveals God. So when you get when you get into the word of God, and I said this to the students today, when you put the word of God in, you are then able to think the thoughts of God. You know the thoughts of God. You know the thoughts of God. That's why Romans chapter 12, verse 2 is so powerful. When it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be renewed by the transforming be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you could know what? The good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. When you get into the word of God, you know what the truth is. So when the enemy tells you you're not enough, God's disappointed with you, hey, this sickness, you must you must have earned it, you must have deserved it, you must have done something wrong, God is disappointed within you, no. What happens is then how the spirit of God speaks to you, he speaks the language of the word of God. So. Denise, get into the word of God. Everyone get into the word of God and you will know when the enemy is deceiving and what is truth. Amen. God made it so simple. Oh, he made it so simple. You don't have to walk around in confusion. Amen. So TC on chat asked this. He says, how do we manifest the resurrection power? Well, let me say this. The resurrection power, that's Christ in you right? That's the spirit of God living inside of you. But how we manifest this is again, if I can go back to Romans chapter 12, you need to know what lives with that inside of you. The Bible says the truth shall set you free. I like how Andrew says it, but it's only the truth, you know, that sets you free. You can have all this resurrection power inside of you and not know it. Oh, well, I'm sick. And you know, my parents were sick and they had diseases. And so it's just part of my DNA. It's just part of my heritage. No, you have the resurrection healing power of God, but if you don't know that, you're going to constantly speak and agree with the enemy. So how you manifest the resurrection power is you get these promises and you begin to speak them over your life. Not like speak them like, uh, hi God, um, yeah, could you do this for me today? No, he's already done it. He lives inside of you. So the way you manifest is you start speaking it with authority. I speak to my body right now in the name of Jesus. You have no right to be sick. You are not of this world. You are a child of God. You've been bought with a price. Do, not, do you not know you're a temple of the Holy Spirit? I rebuke every sickness. I do not believe the diagnosis that has been spoken over me. I believe the truth, not facts of this world. I believe the truth of God's word and the work of the cross. When he said it is finished, that means sickness is finished in my body. So I agree with that. And you start manifesting the resurrection power of healing and prosperity and deliverance and power and victory and peace. Because what you, you start speaking the word of God with authority over the enemy. You have no authority. Leave. You start speaking to symptoms. No, no, no. Symptoms. You don't have a voice within my life. You start speaking to situations. No, no, no. This doesn't steal my peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, Valsa asked this on Facebook and Valsa, I just, my eye falls on this. Um, she says, I have an impending sense of doom. What should I do? <laughs> I'll just tell you right now, the enemy will try to put worry and fear. Something bad's going to happen. Something, you know, something's around the corner. Can I just tell you right now, God doesn't speak with the voice of fear. God does not bring confusion. He's not the author of confusion. God doesn't bring temptation. So if there is an impending sense of doom or something's going to go wrong or something's 
man, you start speaking over your future. You know what? Every attack of the enemy, I rebuke it. You have no authority. I'm going to be at the right place at the right time. Holy Spirit, I, you lead me. You guide me. You give me discernment. You give me wisdom. You give me understanding. If I find myself in a difficult situation, I'm not going to be fearful. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to be like, it's just exactly, oh no. And you accept it. No, you say, hey, I've arrived and I've arrived as one who's victorious, as one who's the cross lives within me, the power of God and the Holy Spirit right now. And you're able to speak life. You're able to speak spirit. You're able to speak authority to those things of Valsa. Do not let fear have a voice within your life. And people will say, well, how do I speak against fear? This is what's so powerful. First John chapter four. In first John chapter four, that whole chapter, I'm going to encourage you to read because there's so much about the love of God in there. It says perfect love casts out fear. Here's the thing, when you know God loves you, you're like, you know what, I'm loved of God, I don't have to worry about the future. And I do not care what comes my way. God's love for me has a way, has victory, has provision, has healing, because he loved me so much on the cross. He doesn't just say, hey, I loved you on the cross, so I don't love you today. I love you on the cross. That, hey, that was a big deal, guys. Like, you should be happy with that. No, his love of the cross started this whole relationship that he loves you every single day. So you can speak to fear. All right, um, let's do this. Um, what does, Roxanne asked this on YouTube, what does a victorious life look like when you accept the finished work of the cross? It says nothing is impossible to him who believes. When you start to understand that you have this victorious life because of that cross, again, I'm telling you, you can walk in divine healing. You can walk in abundance of prosperity that you are able to give to every good work. You do not have to walk in fear and depression and worry. You do not have to have mental depression, suicidal thoughts. You don't have to be in fear about your family or loved ones, but instead you start speaking. You're able to speak the life of God. I'll just tell you right now, a victorious life is exactly what Jesus died to give you. And what it looks like, it looks like the promises of the word of God. So if you want to know what that victory looks like, get into the word of God and you'll see every promise there. All right. And Vicki on chat asked this because we're talking about this victory, the power of the cross, Jehovah Rapha, the healer. And this is one on um, healing. Uh, Vicki says, what do you do when you are standing against symptoms and have stopped taking medicine, but you still see symptoms sometimes that prevent you from working? Here's the deal with symptoms. Um, symptoms are... And I always tell my kids this, symptoms are this, you know, when you get that scratchy throat or you feel that ache or you feel like, man, I just feels like something's like just off in my body, right? Uh, symptoms are this, right? It's just a knock. Symptoms are a knock. And he, and the devil's always knocking with symptoms just to see if you're going to go, oh man, I think I'm getting in a cold, man, I think my back is out, man, I'm getting old, man, I'm just losing my strength, right? He, he's knocking to see how you answer, and you answer with your words. You answer with what you speak over it. And so can I just say this about symptoms? Um, symptoms, oh wow, they feel real, right? And so what we've got to do is we've got to start answering symptoms with the word of God. We don't answer it with like, oh, wow, well, everybody else is getting sick right now. And, you know, the cold is going around. Oh, the cold is really going around right now. So, you know, well, it's probably most likely I'm going to get it. Or, oh, well, that makes sense that I, I have a sore throat. Oh, it makes sense that my chest is getting tight. Well, because I was with so-and-so. -and, -so. and it's like with your words, you just accept it. And so if you have been in, in the process of, of standing against those symptoms, right, and they try to come, that's just the enemy trying to discourage you to see, are you going to answer the door? Are you going to speak death over yourself? Are you going to come into agreement with this? Or are you going to stand against me? And sometimes, I'll just tell you, sometimes there's multiple times in a day you're saying, symptoms, I'm telling you, you have no right. I speak peace over this body. This is why I, I have sometimes told the story, you know, praying for my son. He had a sore throat, little, it was tiny. Oh my gosh, he was so little when this happened. He's bigger now. But um, 
come sore throat. Oh, what? No, there's no room in you for sickness. Come on, symptoms get. Michael is not sick in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. You go away. Michael, does it feel better? Yeah, mom, it does. So he goes off place. Comes back. Mom, my throat hurts again. Ah, oh, dumb devil. Trying to bring that back when we got rid of it. All right, well, we tell this symptom right now to go in the name of Jesus. Right? And so later he came to me, Mom, why does he keep coming back? And it was just like, how do I answer him? I'm asking the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, because the devil is dumb. He's just going to try. But his deceptive power, his deception, I'm going to say power, his deception is to see if within that attack, if we will give it power by receiving it. So can I just uh, encourage you today, Vicki, keep speaking over those symptoms, speak the life of God. Um, Andrew has a series on spirit, soul, and body and authority of believer. Those are so super powerful when it comes to how do you start speaking out of who you are in the spirit, not who you are in the flesh. And I just speak healing and life over your body. Um, we are already out of time. There are some really good remaining questions here. Um, so I'm going to encourage you, um, please check out um, uh, lifefoundations.net where I talk a lot more about the goal of the cross. Uh, Freedom on chat asked this question, what is a practical way to teach this to teenagers? Can I just encourage you? Those are some really powerful resources that I've set and put in a really powerful, even devotional, a daily devotional on the power of of the cross, the goal of the cross within your life. So I would like you to check that out. I believe that would be a huge blessing to you. And then any other question that we didn't get to, again, go to Andrew Walmack Ministries Facebook page, hit like, and then more of these questions, uh, Barry and Greg, um, and they're just so smart. They're so wise. Sometimes I listen to them, I'm like, how did they say that so powerfully, so simply? And I just got it like that. Wow, I've never heard it like that before. So I just really encourage you to check that out. And again, all of our live Bible studies, not just the live ones, but whenever we run a rerun, whenever we do the archives, guys, I'm telling you, it is a word that God has for you this day and any other day that you tune in. So please check that out. I just want to pray over you uh, for any situation that you're going through, that you're able to just truly be able to look at those things and say, no, I know what lives inside of me. So anything that has been trying to speak death over you or been trying to take you captive, as we just speak right now in the name of Jesus, the love of God towards these situations. Father, I thank you that your nature, your power lives in each and every one watching or listening right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that they do not give in. They do not receive what the devil is telling them, but they're able to speak. No, it has been finished by Jesus. I have this resurrection, living God and Savior living inside of me today. So we speak to every situation and we say every attack, every curse, everything that has been trying to come against the children of God right now, we just rebuke those things that we speak, the power of God. And Lord, I thank you that they are renewing their mind to the promises of God. So that is authority which they speak. That is the heart of you they speak over these situations right now in the name of Jesus. And for anyone that says, I have never accepted this revealed, manifested, demonstrated love of God towards me. I do not have victory then please call our prayer line. We want to pray with you. And uh, I'll also say this in, in closing. If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, wow, that is one of the gifts of the cross, what he had died to give you so you could have access to the fullness of his power. So call our prayer ministers. They would love to pray that prayer of salvation, lead you in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and also help you get those resources that I mentioned tonight. So God bless you. Thank you so much for letting me serve you and minister the word of God. I love you. God bless you. And we will see you next time on Life Bible Study. I'd like to give you a special invitation to join me on March the 7th through the 9th for our men's advance. We're going to have Jeremy Pearson speaking. He's a powerful minister and also Todd White. And then we'll also have myself and some of our staff here. And we've been doing these men's advances for over a decade and we have seen people's lives changed. I would really encourage you, especially you ladies, send your husbands, send your kids. We've seen people's lives changed and I promise you it'd be a blessing. So check it out. March the 7th through the 9th, our men's advance in Woodland Park, Colorado.
Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 